Today we are playing Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. We are continuing the fourth turn as the axis. In the previous stream, we managed to cut off the railway lines um, here at the Kalinin Kalin uh, salient. As you can see, our 8th Panzer Division managed to cut out this single railway line into the Kalin Kalinin salient, whereas our motorized and uh, infantry divisions at the Demiansk uh, salient, they managed to reach this double double rail, even though we don't have it actually, we don't have a unit on it, but we have effectively cut the railway there. But now we are ought to continue with the Stalingrad situation. So I've been thinking about this and looking at the overall strength of enemy forces around this area. Uh, I've decided that we should actually pull quite a significant portion of our troops, leaving a token force in the city. But um, we, we should actually take all of the divisions that have been uh, reduced in, in, in combat out of the pocket. And after that we can determine whether we have actually enough to keep the pocket alive or just pull everything out. And important is also that when we are looking at these enemy divisions, we should be focusing on the attacking capabilities, not so much for the defensive values. But okay, if we start from the city, the city has now, on the northern side of the city, there's 7,000 men. And on the southern side, I think... Okay, so these are actually belonging to the same this is a single division if we put these together, and then we have the 71st Infantry Division also in the lower part of the city. I'm just worried if we leave just 3,000 men, I think that will not hold. About this unit, I'm not that sure. It's only a single single division. Here we have a little bit def better defensive position, but this is the weakest. This can't hold. Over here. Karpovka. That's also one of the main airports in the area and well we don't have a depot we have a depot next to it but okay we can we can pull out these troops completely what is their fighting status it's still relatively good but They have seen quite a quite a lot of fighting. Okay, we can actually merge them here. So this unit can go down here. This unit is actually well it's it has less than half of its like table of equipment. So that's of course not ideal, but it still has 11,000 men, so a lot of men, but not that much equipment. Also, this unit is in refit. I guess I changed them to refit because they got badly attacked in the previous turn. So, 
holding actually these three positions the two ones in the city and these around the city or south of the city is kind of those are strong positions I think this position is also defensible Pasar, Pasargino but then the difficulties begin um We have to keep this Panzer Division over here to block the possible entrance of Soviet units. And I would like to push this enemy unit away, but and re-establish the railway link, of course. But I don't think that's realistic. Because we have to maintain the fighting capability of that 11th Panzer Division. We we shouldn't really attack anything with it. Yeah. You can see now the damaged rail is here in the middle. Even if we were to capture this, we, I don't think we could still build up the railway back to operational status in one turn. Hmm. Let's move these headquarters. The 6th Army headquarter. I guess it could go down here. With the core, 8th core headquarters. This unit is ready. How about this one? They are ready. Reserve. Okay, they are also ready. But very with very low equipment. Again, same issues. Seem to be with all of these units that the equipment is lacking. And here is another Romanian unit. This is actually unready status. I think we can send it, send it here. Cavalry. I think the cavalry has to stay. Yeah, I think this is quite, quite, quite obvious that we have to pull pull this particular unit out, just because it has such a low defensive value. And yeah, table of table of equipment, forty. <laughs> That's not going to be enough. So now the weak point. If we look at this situation, uh, 
like we can keep the lifeline open to the city. Um, such a shame that here we have no strong defensive position. This would be very exposed. I think we have options though. We have tanks. We have kind of a good situation with the tanks. Like I don't think this unit over here is needed. I'm I expect that that uh this line would hold. This unit will not hold. That's evident. It's just the question is, should I pull it out completely? Or should it be in Pasar, Pasar Gino? Let's move it there. Now it's 17 there. Now of course the weakest point. I think this is a relatively good setup. We could even further weaken this unit in the city. So oh, it's 71, 39, 18, 17. Like right now, this unit is threatening this position. We have no entrenchment over here. We could also leave this open if we want. We could leave it open. I'm gonna have to check. Okay, we have a lot of construction battalions here in the army group. Don't that's exactly exactly what I wanted. And we still have we have more more tanks. They are still a little bit too far away from the front. I don't want to overload this railway line. It doesn't look overloaded right now. Where is the closest depot? I think we could... We could do this decision and put it over here. Okay, there is no railway here, so closest depot has to be this one and this one. And the rest we will have to just fly. Have these tank units. It's only strength of one here the, by the river crossing. It's motorized. It's not really in that good of a shape, but is this a better to have this forward position here or should we 
fall back behind the river. I think we could fall back behind the river. There's no need to stay in this while we are giving up the line. Still we have these these two holes. But it doesn't matter actually, it, we only need to have this hole blocked. Where is the depot? Okay, we have... This is our depot situation, so it's these two depots. I think we should fly freight to both of these. I'm just thinking, should these HQs go and sit on top of the depots? I think they should. Can we hold this? It's only 14. I think what I'm going to do is that I will send this unit over here. The Romanian core. That guy could be even closer. This one should be here. So we sent this one tank unit <clears throat> to hold this position. To be the key key position key position player here. I would feel a little bit more comfortable if we we had something something else to put there too. Romanian anti-tank company. Okay. I would rather put it on the core.
sixth Romanian core. I think it could belong to the fourth Romanian army. We can do that kind of reassignment. Yeah, I think that's okay. What kind of air units do we have here? Nothing really much. I think we could still rescue it if, if this is in immediate danger. I have no idea. Or whatever. I think I think it can hold. I think we want to send this division over here. Okay. Maybe like that. And how do we counter against this rifle core? Do we just let it blast its way through? Now we have these units. The ones that haven't yet unloaded. Would go actually here. Yeah, it's okay. And this unit could go here a little bit closer. That's better. Let's put them to reserve. So hopefully when these Romanians get engaged to a battle, these reserves would fill in. But there might have been a rule that if the battle is too decisive for the attacker, the reserves won't appear to the battle in time. So, that might be a problem. Problem is that we don't have any entrenchment there. That's probably the main issue.
Okay, this rail is now looking red. So let's let's not try to like put too much freight through it because of troop movements. That's not going to be worth it. I think this unit has to stay here for a while. Then we actually have these two infantry divisions. And I am very tempted to send them here, but also the situation in the south needs our attention. We need at least one infantry division, maybe even more here. So well, let's send one through here. Okay, there's another, another unit. I think we have to do something like this to try to block it. Next turn we will be able to move these these forces to the front. Two here, one here. And okay, we have these units too.
And then we have still the other other division somewhere here. Okay. How bad is the supply situation actually? Well, this is a, this is apparently a bad node point. It kind of cuts the rail, or we have to go through it. So there is really not not that much choice. Let's put him there. Okay. And now we have to think what units we we want to send back to the line. They could make it. They could also make it. So, okay, they have 16 attack over here. 23 plus 4, so they could actually overwhelm this position. Three, six, okay. Thirteen. This is also, these are weak. Like one option is, of course, that we let them, let them come. We withdraw to the second line. And we try to make some sort of an encirclement or something like that. I think that's... We can keep these token units here, just holding the front. I don't think, I don't think we necessarily want to have a... Even though it would be a river crossing, but they can still put so much strength that I don't think it's worth it. Let's see. Just, just and just cross that. I think that's something that I want to do. I don't want to be here. I think we should be prepared for, for the breakthrough. The problem is, of course, that they are facing such a such a strong enemy that they might be completely destroyed, and that's something we want to avoid. Uh, now this unit is too weak. Okay, now it would be twelve. That is actually quite good.
I will actually do something like this. Yeah. And this Arab special purpose battalion. These guys. Will be there. Then we could also check the reserve situation. Can we actually take something to the front? Answer Jaegers. The morale is a little bit low. Pioneer Battalion. I think we want to transfer it on map. And we also are going to take this unit, even though it has a, high, a very low, or not very low, but still kind of low morale. I think we want to take it to the front. Okay, this guy is refitting. And then we have a whole division here. Yeah, I would like to do something like this. Can this guy actually? Let's let's see. Let's move him first. Just in case, if the enemy would reach us, we have a defense set up over here. some depleted units. Yeah, it's the Croat unit. Okay. They should be actually refitting. These are refitting here. They can't move. Okay, is there still something that I need to do before we go to the next turn? Yeah, this is way too strong. They can reposition here. Good. It's looking quite good. These are almost capable of fighting. They have quite okay. 
equipment wise yeah they are in a good shape except they have very few guns i could almost send them back back to the front yeah why not do we need anything in the center i don't think so I don't think there's a risk. So now this is the biggest, biggest spot in our lines. I could of course try to push the enemy out with the tanks. A little bit help the situation. And I guess these units could join and attack this unit. I don't know, maybe. He would lose quite a lot of cohesion by attacking in this weather. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's blizzard anyways. Let's try to send some supplies. Out the Romanian transports. Let's use first the Romanian transports to do this. But the supplies should be coming maybe somewhere else. Hmm. Yeah, maybe something like this. Could we make actually a depot here? Station. And we can make a depot. Could be priority one. Let's try something like this. still fly some supply missions apparently. How about here?
and did we already supply them, you ask? No, we did not. We can actually supply the closest answer division if we want to. Maybe, maybe not. Let's just push stuff to the Demiask pocket. If I forgot something, I I must have forgotten. Uh, let's maybe here. What is the rail situation? Yeah, the rail repair guy is there. But is Vitebsk actually the place where we want to keep the rail repair man? I think. I think actually that's going to be Smolensk. Or we can create a depot here in Orsha. Although no, they don't have a... It's just manpower. So it has to actually, the majority, a lot of stuff goes through Minsk. Yeah, okay. Maybe no. Let's just keep it as it is. We can quickly look at the units. Which ones could be out of our reach for the HQs? Okay, there is some mountain divisions authorized. Well, how about we move this here? Okay, that's good. This unit. Okay, that's also now in reach. Also in reach now. Okay. Mountain division over here. Well, that I cannot really affect. That's that's gonna be like that. Yeah, this is an easy fix. This is not as easy. 16th Army. We have so much concentration of forces here. Maybe even completely unnecessarily. How about in the north? Here we have this mega strong unit. What looks the weakest? Well, it's this light division over here. I 
think actually this we could let go. Maybe like here. Yeah, I like that. And this unit. Yeah, that looks better, much better. Reserve. Reserve. Yeah, that's good. There's still a couple of divisions. This division. This division, okay. Let's actually do something like this. Incorporate some German units. Yeah, like here, why not? Or over here, this is maybe more crucial. Good. And these are in reserves. Okay. Mountain core is out of out of reach. Well, tough luck. And the Panzer core. Okay. I think we are good to go. These look not that significant. Yeah. I think I'm okay with my choices. Let's just end the turn and see what happens. This is going to be interesting.
couple of sorties. But still minimal air activity because of the blizzards. What will they do? Organizing fronts. Reactionary attacks. This is going to be crucial. We hold in the north. I think I zoomed out a little bit too much. But it's okay. Okay, we are wrote at negative values. The city is lost. Okay. But we stopped them south of the city. So those units were not enough, actually, to hold the city. Because big casualties. Those are... That's something what I expected, that... Uh, but I just couldn't really factor it in, because... Uh, the combat value was so high for those units, but in reality still there was only 8,000 men against 70,000. So I understand that there is a big disparity of forces, but still the combat value was really misleading. Very big tank losses for Soviets, they are using also air units. I couldn't see, are we using air stuff? What I'm really interested in is the Demyansk. Okay, the Demyansk situation, are they going to counterattack? Or try to take the airfield, which would be a major disaster for us. Because they apparently pushed us out uh, from the defensive position in front of the airfield in the previous turn. Soviets attack in the south. Here we hold only 3,000 men against over 20,000. We have... We have Air Force contributing to these fights, that's really good. Apparently the weather wasn't that bad in the south. But let's see. These positions I expected to hold and they they do hold, even though the losses are actually quite equal in some of these battles. Here we hold 15,000 men against 73,000. But the Romanians don't hold, okay. So the flank, flank is actually falling. We would need more troops to the mountains. against 51,000. They are holding, they are not even grinding the forts down. That's good. But that fort was actually reduced. Because that's my fear. We have those really good forts that allow us to keep very few forces. But in the ne next couple of turns, it could be that those forces are reduced to nothing. Uh, the Soviets try to break out. They can't. Here we actually are withdrawn oh, from level 3 fort. So there is some kind of a hole in our front. In the city we hold. 
but we take bigger losses. Soviet losses supposedly so weak, even though they lost they lose more tanks than men. Here even forces Soviets a lot of tanks coming against us. Okay, we hold on the northeast of the army group centers salient. Here we are forced back. 50,000 men. Seven thousand against thirty-two thousand. That was an important, important victory to hold that position. So what I'm expecting is that the supply situation for the Soviets in this western flank of our army group center would, would get much worse in this Kalinin semi-pocket. Okay, we actually are pushed back on the western side of the Kalinin semi-pocket. And we are pushed back in the north, back into the city. Or next to our depot. Okay. I think that those were the attacks. Now we will see the concentrations of enemy forces. They are still attacking. In the form front line phase. I didn't know that they can attack. Okay, that was it. So Stalingrad is lost. We are out of outside of the city. We held the other positions there, we got pushed back in some relatively weak positions. Nothing, uh, nothing really super bad, but, but now that the enemy has actually managed to take the city back, they can repair the rails to Stalingrad and use it as a depot. And that's a bad thing for us. Because that means that their attacks will intensify. I guess what I want to do now, I want to just kind of look at the overall situation, play the air phase, because I expect we can't really fly any missions. And then leave it for the next, next stream to resolve the turn. But yeah, we should inspect this Kalinin situation. Apparently they managed to grab those uh, places where we got the rail. So we have to recapture those. Or actually close this breach. And I think we can do it. There is nothing opposing us here. There is enemies in the pocket. 
and we see they are have a red mark here indicating that they have low supply values. If we look at the amount of trucks that are in repair, it's 68,000, it was 677 in the previous turn. So uh, the number went up. And Soviet losses, tank losses, 883. Massive tank losses for Soviets. B lost 86. So not not horrifying, but still. But yeah, Soviets can't sustain if they would lose a thousand tanks per turn. They would be out of tanks in 10 turns. Okay, let's take the air out. Let's also check the air, or check this, what, what did we actually get? A lot of stuff appeared to our reserves. Infantry battalions, yeah, these are all good stuff. But what is their table of equipment? Are they basically empty divisions and they need a couple of turns? Maybe, maybe so, we have to check it later. Okay, if we check this situation now. Out here. So effectively we got we got pushed out from the city. I actually see some opportunities for smaller scale encirclements if we can just make these frontal positions hold. If these two tiles hold, we can cut through here. Cut through here, we could get this encircled. Okay, the river has now disappeared basically here. Because of the snowfall and the temperatures. They don't get any more that significant penalty if they try to attack our positions. But now they actually, the Romanians managed to build a fort here, or there is a level 1 fort. So it's actually a defensible position this time, which is really good. Good news for us here. How about in the Caucasus? I was surprised that the enemy doesn't didn't attack us here, but they are doing some movement over here, so there is one or two divisions approaching us. And they have their these three divisions over here. There might be even more if we, we don't know for sure. We could run some air if we want to, some recon. Better in the air, well, no, it's going to be a blizzard. It's not worth it. Okay. That is deep snow. Oh, it's just it's snow. It's not heavy snow yet. Because heavy snow actually gets even more difficult for, for tanks. So, yeah, I guess the Stalingrad situation could be worse, but it also could have been better that we would have held the city tiles, but we couldn't hold them. So, the city is now effectively lost. We pulled out from the city. It didn't get encircled, at least yet. There is still a chance that we get encircled outside of the city, which is of maybe even worse scenario than actually being destroyed in the city. And these are building now fortification levels here. That's that's good. That's really good. Because I'm expecting that we can make 
couple of battles here, a couple of stands, stands here, but but eventually, when they get their depots working here, we have to pull out. And the strongest position here would be Rostov Don line. Of course, we optimally we would want to hold this position to manage area here, Salsk, these railway lines, so we can supply the Caucasus front. But okay, let's look at the situation here in the center. These three divisions, they remain encircled. That's really good. There are no enemy units here facing on the front. So what I see here, I see an encirclement. This, this is looking really nice. Losing, this was a light wood style. Losing this style, now we have a potential enemy breach possibility here. So, I don't, I don't like that at all. And these are open tiles, we basically would need Panzer divisions here to ensure that they can't cross. But, uh, again, they, they attacked here, but they moved their units away. I have no no idea where are their units at the in the Kalinin pocket semi pocket. They might have been able to evacuate some of their units because they were able to re-establish the railway lines. But are they repaired? Is any freight going through? That that we don't know. Only the Soviets know that. And. Uh, Here in the north, nothing has really changed. We can check there was the only battle. A big battle. Soviets taking significant losses, air and land. Um, this was unexpected victory. I guess it I guess the decisive factor must have been all of these air, I mean uh, support units. And we didn't have that much artillery. We had Stooks and still Howitzers. I don't know. I I don't know what went wrong there. Here we, we held here. And here in the swamp we got pushed back. 45,000 men. There were two battles. Two out of two, okay. Yeah. Here we also have held. We held in the city of Kaluga. On this line we held everywhere. Yeah, these are these are good results. I'm actually really, really satisfied. For the result. Okay. Let's check what what have we been planning? And actually take the air units, make them visible. How difficult would it be to supply these positions? We have we have still those two depots and this one depot here. Hmm. 
Yeah, okay. How about this position here? No, okay, there's no railways. Okay, we can see now freight loadings in our rails. Now this rail is also getting a little bit more use. Also this one. Okay. I don't know, like... We could check the weather again and... Yeah, I don't think we are going to be running any recon. Even though I would like to know what is happening here. Nah, just execute there. But yeah, anyways, it was really, really good turn for us. Previous one. And in the next stream, we will be focusing on fixing, containing the Soviet Caucasus bushes, reinforcing our positions there. Trying to trying to make some encirclements here in the Stalingrad uh, area using those Panzer divisions that have, we have been like reserving. So we try to make a couple of couple of moves here. Let's see how successful we will be next turn. Here we should assess if there are any weak points in our front. Uh, quickly, quickly just browsing, I don't really see that difficult situations here. We will finalize this encirclement. Set up a defensive line on these woods. Light woods, heavy woods. Okay. And next time we will we will push through here. That's going to be our objective. Ah, oh, is the okay? There's one Panzer division that is going to be withdrawn, but only in five turns. That's enough for us. That's enough to make a drive towards Moscow. <laughs> well, I don't I don't necessarily think that, but but at least close this pocket see how much we can get the enemy units trapped there then of course we can use these motorized ones to rush to the airports so they can't even air send air reinforcements or air freight but okay thank you for following the stream and see you on the next one bye